You can already get the legendary items, which are the best items in Horizon Forbidden West, relatively early on. But I also want to go over other amazing weapons, gear and upgrades you want to get as soon as possible to make your life to the new world way easier. Let's start with an early weapon you really don't want to miss when around chain scrape. You get it from a mission called A Bigger Boom, which you find over here on the map. And I think it's available after having progressed the main story a bit. Then at one point the shops in chain scrape will open open up and that is when this mission should appear. After completing it you get the first spike thrower in the game with ammo that explodes after a short delay. Like for early in the game it's really amazing to clear some of the machines pretty fast and even a little later on I used it here against the shell snapper which can be tricky to take out but with a perfectly placed spear I was able to remove his big shield like component and nuke to half the health bar. So quickly destroying the machine. It's really powerful, the blast can also deal damage to other machines nearby. The downside is that it doesn't normally remove components, it just nukes down the health. So smart to remove them first and then switch to this weapon to finish the job. And you can buy the resources needed for the spike thrower ammo at the fender already in chain scrape. So totally do the A Bigger Boom side mission when it's available early on and for this you need to gather some machine parts like charger horns which you can now easily remove with regular arrows from the hunter bow. Tear works a bit different in the Forbidden West, there are still special tear blast style arrows but they are saved for later on when you unlock the cleaving sharpshot bow from the Broken Sky main mission. But before that, your regular hunter bow arrows can easily get the job done, especially when you upgrade these weapons at the workbench. I ended up using the hunter bow you start the game with for quite a long time, because after getting it to rank three, you already have 60 tier, which is quite a lot. And the final upgrade only costs one sound cell from a burrower, which you can easily shoot off when he's about to do his stun attack. So let's go over more nice early unlocks, including for legendary weapons. Of course, if you like the video so far, then leaving a like on it would really help me out. And subscribe if you haven't already for way more Horizon Forbidden West content like this. Remember that Karja Blazon outfit from Horizon Zero Dawn, where you can get it in Forbidden West as well, but it's very easily missable. You namely need to infiltrate this optional Eastern Lie Rebel camp, you can already go to early on once you go beyond Baron Light. Although again, there's no like mission or story moment leading you there. So you really have to go there yourself in order to get the armor, take care of the enemies. And then in the sort of leader's hideout, you find a chest that you have to pry open and that will contain the outfit. A big change compared to the original is that you can now only have two traps at once at the start of the game. You can enhance this with two skills in the trapper section, the second one being all the way down, and they can put down four traps at the same time. Well, this armor increases that even more. It namely has the trap limit skill, meaning that you can go beyond the maximum obtainable true skills. So if you have both skills unlocked, you can put down six traps by just wearing this armor. If you upgrade it, you go to trap limit plus two, giving you the option to put down eight traps at once, which looks deadly. It's kind of sad that the tremor task did not really care for my creation, but when it works, these traps can of course be quite nice. You could argue that maybe putting down eight in one go is a bit of an overkill, and when you get this armor, you can't immediately put down that many traps, you will need the other skills in combination with the upgrades of this armor but yeah it's still nice if you like this playstyle from the previous game that with this armor you can enhance it and it of course looks awesome it's one of my favorite looks from zero dawn so it's cool to have it here again now for the other items we want to go a little further into the game because while you can already view the world map from the beginning there are some progression blockers blocking you from checking out the most of the map but they seem to disappear after the dying lands main quest which you can already reach early on if you primarily focus on the main missions like here Dennis is level 11 while battling the machines during this part of the game. If you complete this main mission and the one that follows you unlock the majority of the map so they can already go to settlements that sell some of the best items in the game. First though real quick if you like me love raptors then you want to go to this iota cauldron because that's where you get the claw strider override. You can namely easily complete 
complete the game and do most of the side content without riding one of these machines. And that would of course be a shame. There are by the way multiple elemental variants and they can all be your mount. Just approach them or use chuck arrows to stun them which also lets you override them as a mount after completing that cauldron. And without spoiling anything that cauldron is insane. So that's already enough reason to check it out. But yeah, to have the Claw Strider as a mount, of course, seals the deal. So when the bigger part of the map opens up after the Dying Lands main mission, you can also pay a visit to some of the Tanakh settlements like the Scalding Spear, which over here on the map. For one, you can find a level 15 quest here called the Deluge by talking to the painter in this settlement. He will send you to a nearby location where you have to check on some missing people. It's a really easy quest and after completing it, you get an amazing armor set for early on in the game called the Tanakh Vindicator. With very powerful skills that you can of course upgrade even more at the workbench. Like this will probably be your go-to armor for a long time. Although it's also worth noting that you can buy a really cool armor set at Scalding Spear. The armor fender there. And I really like this one in terms of look. And it's pretty great in terms of stats as well. Especially if you are a ranged player. And the Sunwing Circulator is pretty easy to get. Just go over here on the map. Kill the Sunwings which have a 50% chance to drop this material and then you can go back to buy the armor. Sure you will need a large machine core as well which is also needed for the amazing Vanguard Hunter bow you can also buy at the Scalding Spear. This bow is basically an insane upgrade of that starter bow I just talked about. Again, also earnable relatively early on by just going to this weapon fender. For this, we need a Tide Ripper Circulator. And the best part is that these machines also drop large machine cores. When we create a job, an icon on the map would appear for a Tide Ripper site close by. If you don't see the icon, you can of course still go to this location to fight the machine. And I say machine, but there could be multiple of them in the area. And if they're gone, they can fast travel away to a shelter, skip the time to for example the next morning and then the machines should appear again. The Tide Rippers are weak against Freeze and we now apply this effect with the amazing Bolt Blaster that is also totally worth getting from a Fender after the Sea of the Sands main quest over here on the map. You only need a circulator from a bellow bag for that, which should be easy enough. But yeah, even without this weapon, you should be able to take on the Tide Rippers by once again freezing them and focusing on their weak points. It's just a nice early way to get large machine cores to buy some of the purple items the moment you see them at a fender. But there is a higher rarity this time than purple legendary. And if you take a trip to Thorn Marsh, you will already see two legendary armor sets for sale for the very first time. But the idea is that you get these amazing items during the end game. Like for these armor sets at the Thorn Marsh fender, you will need parts from some big high level machines. So it's not really something you can easily do when you encounter the shop for the first time at a low level. But luckily there are already some legendary items you can get relatively early on if you know where to look. Again, these are for the end game for high level characters. But if you follow the Broken Sky main mission, which is noted for level 17, and then complete the main mission that follows, you'll find two ladies outside of the arena over here on the map. And if you complete their side quest, you can already access the arena relatively early, while overall it's recommended to focus on this activity after finishing the game. But there are difficulties for these challenges though, so it's totally smart to already try some of the easier ones to get your hands on a legendary item. Every challenge challenge namely gives you some medals if you complete them under a certain time and after completing the amateur and some of the intermediate challenges you will have enough medals to already buy a legendary armor in the shop. Like one that I really love and I'm using right now during the end game is the Nora Thunder Warrior with huge bonuses for concentration so you can be in slow motion for a very long time. You can already buy it for 54 medals which again only requires you to do some of the easier challenges. You can all save up for 80 medals, but this does require you to complete some skilled challenges. But then you can get the best hunter bow in the game, which will of course really come in handy if you still need to do most of the game. 
getting the 54 medals for the armor should at least totally be possible. Another legendary weapon you can get relatively early is the Karja Bane. Nice about this one is that you do not need to have a good loadout yourself, just some good raising skills. And as a Warrior Bow fan myself, this is my go-to weapon right now at the max level, so being able to get this way before that is going to be glorious. So you start the first race over here on the map, you can already access this pretty early and after that you are asked to go to the beach over here near Thorn Marsh. So again, completing the Dying Lands main quest and the one that follows will be needed to access the bigger part of the map but after completing one race you will immediately learn about the location for the other one so you can just follow that. It will require you to travel a bit but it is totally worth it to get the legendary weapon. To access the final race you need to complete that Sea of the Sands main mission but then you are able to do it and if you succeed you can get this amazing bow. Of course subscribe for way more Forbidden West videos if you haven't already. We already got one up about the best skills which you can watch by clicking on the screen. For now though I will speak to you in the next one. A like would of course really help me out and I'll speak to you soon. Goodbye!